It's been a long time coming, but we finally have a Stug 3G update for you. This week, we follow Glenn, Bo and Ryan as they fit these final drive units to the hull. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Last time we tried to bolt the final drives on, they weren't quite square with the hull. The hull sides were blown up and ripped from the body. So that caused uh, a lot of stretching in the plate and um, warping. For this side here, it seems to have gone outwards because the blast was on the left hand uh, middle side and it's blown that entire side out that way and this side this way. It's blown the centre out of this here and it's created a bulge. I guess the, the, the blast is so big that it can blow from back there and create this here to pop out. Whereas the other side, it sweeps right in and under because the, the plates actually curve from top to bottom. And that, that's no good because when we go to bolt the final drive on and we do it up tight, what's going to happen is we're actually going to start stressing the, the casing and start putting pressure on the gears and the shafts and uh, bearings inside. And yeah, we don't want that. People so. might say like, oh, well, why don't you just grind it back? Like, why aren't we doing that? Uh, it's a lot of work. And then, you know, it's still not going to be uh, 100%. These here are actually tapered rivets. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut these out and then it's fully welded on the inside as well. So we've got to cut all those rivets out and then cut the weld off and remove that plate. Um, we've made some new ones up. That way we can get them pretty square to the other side at least, you know, without any distortion in that plate. And we'll have to just pack it where it's um, not touching the body. And so our journey begins. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, yeah. Like, well, on the wrong way. The first victims are the rivets. Notice the small cutout on the right hand side of the plate. This was included because the spacer plates were attached to the sides before the full hull assembly. When it came time to assemble the hull, it appears the spacer plates actually covered part of the keyway for the lower front plate. So part of it was cut away so that the factory workers could add in the weld that they couldn't reach otherwise. Big job, okay, that off. This plate is welded from the inside as well, so the boys are going to pull apart the superstructure and hatch plate to make it easier to work. Fitting out the interior is going to be amazing, but there's a lot that has to happen before then. We knew that this would have to come off again eventually, so Bo only tack welded this on. Right? Yeah. Did you get that? Woo. 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 Most parts of this stug are actually welded with mild steel, but some small sections are actually welded with stainless. Whether this is by design or late war shortages, it's nearly impossible to say. It doesn't appear to be consistent anywhere except the torsion bar housings, which are welded entirely with stainless electrodes. A little bit more of these rivets have to be blown out before the plate can come apart.
You'll be able to get that off from there. You really got your shins. No. Yes. Jinxed it. This small circular spacer on the inside has to come off to make it easier for Bo to straighten the hull. As you'll soon see, he'll need any advantage he can get. As we mentioned earlier, this side was severely bent and twisted. Last time, when we went to bolt on the final drives, there was a difference of about 11 millimeters, or 7 sixteenths of an inch, from the bottom to the top. To take this much material off the spacer plate through grinding would have been totally impractical for us. For this vehicle to run properly, the drives have to line up with each other to as near as perfect as possible, so believe me when I say, Bo will be able to make the necessary minor adjustments with this sledgehammer. of cans on this day it was about 35 degrees or 95 Fahrenheit. In the workshop it was maybe a little bit warmer. 
In fact, by the end of the day, the entire tank was almost too hot to touch. You can see that the heat has accentuated the bend in the side. This will shrink back, but hopefully after Glenn and Bo have worked their magic, it will be much straighter than what it was. Some folks say to this very day, he's hammering away at that side. Just kidding. Bo literally smashed it and forced the bulge flat. But as long as that's flat, that surface, yeah. That's the main thing. That's right. Where that, where that um, final dry pot comes in. We recently got this laser level. It's a really cool toy that will come in very handy for lining up running gear. Now the boys can make these thin packers and get the spacer plate perfectly level. Thanks. Yeah, just break and then we'll mark, we'll mark it. If this was a static exhibit, we would not go to this much trouble. It's very fiddly work and takes a lot of trial and error, but anything not square here will haunt us all throughout the build and compound as we go. So it's definitely worth taking the time to get it right. Yep. Oh. What did we have before? So we were about 11, 12 mil. And what's that there? It's two and a half. No, no, we, we've set that off. We got That's two and a half on the beam at the top. Yep. And then down the bottom. And two and a half. So we're, what, we're flat. So that means it's dead level. Dead, dead level. Dead level. Nice work. Yeah. Dead level. Now we're going to check it this way. Considering how we started, this is an incredible result. Since the hole sides were completely blown up, 
twisted and bent, they will never be as square and as flat as a newly machined piece of plate, but it's still important to ensure that the front and back line up. If there's a little bit of variation in the middle, that's not as critical as there's plenty of play in the track to run along the return rollers and road wheels. It's great. It's great. We're measuring off something that's not straight, but yeah, it's we're really good. Yeah, the hull's not that straight, but it's we're measuring. Yeah, well, we're measuring off the hull, so it's gonna it's gonna run on the hull anyway. No yeah, exactly. Right? So, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, well, it's straight it's, on the unstraight hull. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. That's what yeah, we want. Perfect. <laughs> Now it's finally time to test fit the final drive unit. We won't be re-riveting the plates back on as it was. Instead, Bo's going to weld in these bolts. There are a lot of bolts already and heaps of weld. So even though it's not exactly the same, it will still be plenty strong enough. That was so much easier than last time. Oh. Hang on. I'm gonna hold these packages in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hold that. <laughs> hold that. <laughs> now this is not the original drive sprocket. We were hoping that the original ones would be usable, but there's just too many cracks, hairline fractures and corrosion. We only have one usable one in stock, and as you can imagine, they're not easy to come by. We may have to get creative, but we'll tackle that problem next year sometime. to take a little bit more off I think. It's running, it's running down the center, see not to the side? Yeah, it's dead level. Yep, <laughs> right. Nice. Like a glove. We'll get it to within a foul. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you keep spinning. I'll just, I'll just run it. I'll just dial indicator. You just have to 
That's probably a good idea. It's a foot. <laughs> nice nuts on. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Ready? To the center. Yeah. So you oh. measure the center of that wheel down there. Yeah. The center of this one. Yeah. yeah right. Turning it out here is hard. Wow. That is amazing. Happy? Yeah, that's yeah. really good. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah, it's not hitting anything. No. There's heaps of clearance on this bracket. Yeah, there is. So compared to Panzer Force bracket, that's yeah. very close to everything. This is pretty good. Yeah. And now for the other side. As Bo mentioned, this side was not as badly damaged as the other, so they only need to add in a few more packers. So this one's right. That one stays. And then... And then there's... Ah... Uh, I'm gonna take that one out, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that kind of thing. I'll be alright, but... Thank you. 
boys worked really hard to get these parts together for the episode, so we hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to tune in next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armor, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.